<coughs> oh man. I've been under the weather, y'all. Alright. So today <coughs> today I found a very interesting video last night. And it caught my attention. Um, I don't know if people remember little JJ, the comedian. Um, he was I think he was out he first came out as a comedian in like the early two thousand, I wanna say. But uh anyway, I it was some very interesting um information that I seen. I first seen it on Twitter and then I saw it um on YouTube. So we're gonna check this out because it's very interesting. Um you know, we always hear about Hollywood and how they are, you know, not what we think Hollywood really is. Hollywood is actually very demonic, uh, very, um, man, they're, they're, they're evil. <laughs> they be doing some crazy stuff. So anyway, we're going to get into that video. Let me find it right quick. Here's one thing you need to do before Boy. buying anything online. Don't I spend another totally, dime on Amazon. I totally hate um, Amazon until you watch this first. Series detailing his behavior. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna. Savior. In a conversation with actor Bobby K. Bowman, who worked on iCarly for several years. Symphony Thompson. All right, so we're going to go to the video right quick. All right, make this big. Wanna? This is this is crazy. This is crazy. Anybody that's watching um, on TikTok, just know I'm making this video for YouTube. Um. So yeah, but anyway, let's see what's up. I may have to turn it down a little bit too. In. The docu-series Quiet On Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV has been revealing tell all for those who were involved in creating some of the most nostalgic children's television over the last 25 years. The show has put a spotlight on those left in charge at Nickelodeon who are facing serious allegations. Former Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider, who has been accused of abuse and running an inappropriate and tox work environment for children, has just apologized for his behavior in the onset atmosphere of his kids' television shows, which Let me make my um camera a little bit smaller. Kinda a little big. Make it smaller. All right. Aired back in the late 90s, airing through the 2010s. Schneider is known for his work on shows like All That, The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, iCarly, and more. He has long faced allegations of bad behavior, but this newly released docuseries has given fans the first in-depth look at what happened behind the scenes. We would recently spotlight notable Nickelodeon stars who have remained silent about their experience. However, Jay Lewis, also known as Little JJ of the series Just Jordan, would shock fans with his reaction to Quiet on Set. Lewis would go on to break his silence on Facebook. Just Jordan got canceled. I ain't giving up no A, LOL. This would cause several to react. Show didn't even make it to season three and they was already trying to get him to sell out. A dang shame. These producers slash directors and any other adult behind these kids shows need to be investigated thoroughly. This is sick. Y'all forgot about the only great black theme show Nick ever had? Ain't no way fam. That's wild cause that show was amazing. That man didn't produce this show, LOL. That got canceled for other reason. Well, now for the first time ever, Schneider has broken his silence, giving his own reaction on what it was like to watch the docuseries detailing his behavior. 
in a conversation with actor Bobby K. Bowman, who worked on iCarly for several years. The interview was done for The Hollywood Reporter and even shared on Schneider's own YouTube page, although the comment section has been turned off. During the talk, Schneider would say, Facing my past behaviors, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret, and I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. There were lots of people there who witnessed it who also may have felt uncomfortable. So I owe them an apology as well. It was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. And in addition to apologizing, Schneider also reiterated information he released in a statement earlier this week, stating that anything that was aired on television went through multiple layers of approval, which included network executives and other adults that were present on set. He would continue, Every one of those jokes was written for a kid audience because kids thought they were funny. Now we have some adults looking back at them 20 years later through their lens. I have no problem with that. Let's cut those jokes out of the show. Now, of course, folks had a lot to say as soon as the interview was released. Many have already criticized this interview because of the relationship between the actor and producer. One user would write, this was not an interviewer. This sounds like a friend asking his friends questions. The Hollywood reporter should be a Hold on. So I'm a little confused. It goes in to, um, <coughs> he was saying he was sorry he put people in that position and stuff. But now it's talking about like the basically like the skits, I guess, the jokes that the kids were saying. What I got to do with what little JJ was talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I I'm just you know, speaking too early, we'll see. But that kind of just threw me off a little bit because they're he's obviously talking about putting people in a bad position. And at first I thought he was about he was about to say, you know, about the whole allegation of like child abuse or something. But it's obviously it's at, he's talking about a joke instead. But I don't know. Maybe I spoke too early. We'll see. Shamed. Another social media user chimed in and said, I can't even watch this fully because they are friends. Why are we going light on someone who did not protect kids or his staff? He was a grown man who knew what he was doing. He abused his power. This is not right. One more online user wrote, this is disgusting because it shows that Hollywood protects their own or their club. Even before the doc hit, Dan's reputation as a creep was a known fact for those who are in the industry. Separately, a spokesman for Schneider would note that an investigation happened before Schneider left the network in 2018. That statement said all that was found is that Schneider was a challenging, tough, and demanding person to work for and with, nothing else. If I could go back, I would get it done in different ways. I would be nicer. But what do you guys think of this latest reveal from Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider? Let us know in the comments below. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Check out Hype Market for all your cool and original merchandise. And for our YouTube viewers, if you like this story, send us a super thanks by hitting the button below and you can tip us what you want to show your support. For comments. Most definitely show that page some support. Because um, they just dropped some information that I didn't know. But anyway, um, man, I didn't even know that was Dan Snyder. I didn't even know that's how he looked. I, I had no idea he looked like that at all. Um, but let's let's I I just want to go back to one part because it seemed to me that he was um he was kind of denying it in a sense. And he was just saying he was saying something about jokes. He never really said like explain what happened. He never explained what he's sorry for. He just said it's embarrassing and, you know, whatever. So let me see. Can I find it for it? Because, I, 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 man, it's crazy. Okay. So I'm going to go back to this part. This. 
behaviors, some of which are embarrassing. I would say facing my past behaviors, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. And I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. There were lots of people there who witnessed it, who also may have felt uncomfortable. So I owe them an apology as well. It was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. And in addition to apologizing, Schneider also reiterated information he released in a statement earlier this week, stating that anything that was aired on television went through multiple layers of approval, which included network executives and other adults that were present on set. He would continue, Every one of those jokes was written for a kid audience because kids thought they were funny. Now we have some adults looking back at them 20 years later through their lens. I have no problem with that. Let's cut those jokes out of the show. Now, of course, folks had a lot to say as soon as the interview was released. Many have already criticized this. I really want to find out this by this interview because I, this like this video didn't really give us like the deep details of what happened. Um, I, I really. Let's see, can we find? Let's find. Um, let's see. Bro, Nickelodeon is not the same anymore either, which is crazy. Hmm. <clears throat> Talks about quiet on set. So this is the actual interview. Hey, it's Boogie. I play T-Ball on Nickelodeon's iCarly. I got a chance to watch the quiet on set program and I reached. Oh, so this guy actually played on the show. That Dan Snyder produced. This is interesting. Shout out to Dan. To see I wish I could go back and fix that. Uh opportunities have done it period the so i owe that disturbing facing my past behavior things to unpack um but before i dive into my list of topics that i'd like to discuss is there anything you'd like to start off with absolutely watching over the past two nights was very difficult me facing my past behaviors um some of which are embarrassing and that i regret and i definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology Let's talk about the massages. Okay. Watching the content yesterday, it was disturbing. It was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I'm embarrassed that I did it then. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. And even additionally, I apologize to the people who were walking around Video Village or wherever they <laughs> happened because there were lots of people there who witnessed it who also may have felt uncomfortable. So I owe them an apology as well. Yeah. Dan, talk to me about the writer's room. From what I saw, not cool. No, no, and I, I don't mean to cut you off, but if I can cut right to the chase, let me just say, no writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room, ever, period, the end, no excuses. Um, most TV writers, comedy writers have been in writer's rooms and they are aware that a lot of times there are inappropriate jokes made and inappropriate topics come up. Uh, but the fact that I participated in that, especially when I was leading the room, um, it embarrasses me. I shouldn't have done it. Um, and, and, and I can tell you why it hurts really bad for me. Um, I remember very clearly my early experiences, my first experiences in the entertainment business. I was green. I was scared. I was excited. It, it meant the world to me that I was getting those opportunities. And I went in and I got lucky because they were great. My first couple of experiences were fantastic. And the fact that the, and the fact that I didn't pay that forward to every employee that walked through my door, yeah. it, it, it hurts my heart because I should have. And I wish I could go back and fix that. Um, in the writer's room, there's no doubt that sometimes those jokes went 
beyond the pale and I said things that went too far or made practical jokes that went too far and um, that was wrong and that, that was because you know I was an inexperienced producer I was immature wouldn't happen today but um, I'm just really sorry it happened yeah now we know you've had a lot of success over two decades thousands of people have worked with you for you okay. let's speak directly to the people who did not have a good experience with you Okay, I would like to speak to those people because I hate that anybody worked for me and didn't have a good time. You know me. You've been on my sets. Um, look, I've had some employees that have worked for me for 10 years, some more than 20 years, who would work with me again, but um, not everybody. There's a, still a significant number that didn't have a great time working for me, so my batting average isn't nearly high enough in that area. Um, and the way they wouldn't get the best of me is that I would let the pressure of doing 40 or even more episodes per year, I would let that pressure get to me, which a good boss should never, ever do. Was there specific things that you were doing? Sh sure. I would um, snap at people sometimes. Mm -hmm. I would be snarky when I could have given them a nicer answer. Um, I would not give people the time that they needed. I would be in too big a hurry to get on to the next thing I had to do. And watching that show, it made me... There were so many times I wanted to pick up a phone and call some of those people and say, I'm so sorry and let's talk about it and I, I wish you'd had a better time and I wish I could have shown you a better experience. Yeah. Now, you've written hundreds of episodes. Thousands of jokes have been told. Yeah. But currently where we are, uh -huh. some people think that some of those jokes are inappropriate for children. Uh -huh. What do you think of that? All these jokes that you're speaking of, um, that the show covered over the past two nights, every one of those jokes was written for a kid audience because kids thought they were funny mm -hmm. and only funny, okay? Um, now we have some adults looking back at them 20 years later through their lens and they're looking at them and they're saying, oh, you know, I don't think that's appropriate for, for a kid show. Mm -hmm. and. I have no problem with that. If, if that's how anyone feels, let's cut those jokes out of the show. Just like I would have done 20 years ago or 25 years ago. I cut it. I want my shows to be popular. I want everyone to like it. The more people who like the show, the happier I am. Yeah. So if there's anything in a show that needs to be All right, so I'm not going to play the whole video. It's a whole 19-minute video. But, um, wow. Um. I, I I really don't know. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to this. I really don't know how to uh what to really think because <laughs> I don't know what's real, what's true or not. But I can tell you this: a lot of <clears throat> a lot of evil stuff is going on in the Hollywood industry. We we all know that a lot of stuff been revealed. I just find it it's very um interesting to see how everything is now is starting to be exposed in this year of 2024 a lot of stuff is getting exposed a lot of people are getting exposed a lot of people are also finally giving their life to the lord they're finally giving their life to god um they finally starting to pick up their cross and follow jesus which i noticed a lot of YouTubers and content creators, even famous people, um, are starting to give their life to the Lord. And what I see now in this whole Hollywood industry, I guess your famous people and popular people, it's it's this is what it's looking like right now. You got people doing this. So you got people going, you know, over to the Christian side, and you got people that are still going, you know, going farther and farther and farther away from the Lord, and and they're doing more evil stuff, and and they being more uh open about it, like they don't care. Uh, everybody, you know, everybody see what Lil Nas X is doing, you know, um, people are seeing what some of the artists, you know, Billy Eilish and all them and Doja Cat, what they're doing right in front of our face. You know? So, that's why I said this is interesting. 
the whole Nickelodeon thing. Um, Nickelodeon really have changed a lot since. It's not the same. It's not the same show. It is not the same channel, you know, kid channel that I used to watch. Now, I will say there was a lot of inappropriate things, but it's just not the same anymore. Um, it is very different. I I don't know. Not even one kid show on there. Not even one. Um, but I did find it interesting that the guy that was interviewing him was the same guy that played in a show that he produced. I thought that was very interesting. It was very interesting. Because, like some people said, this seemed like a friend-to-friend conversation rather than an interview. <clears throat> when I look at it, it seemed like that would possibly could be what it is, a friend-to-friend conversation, because um, obviously he worked with him. But that guy did seem like he like he had like some question of his own. Um, you could kind of tell that he 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 kind of wanted to know why. We I don't know if that guy had any issues with him. I don't know. Um, he probably have had an issue with him before, and that's probably why he brought him on to interview. I I don't know. Uh, all I know is the Lord is just, he's reveal the Lord is revealing a lot of stuff to us. A lot of people are exposing people and the Lord is using people to expose people. And I just pray that Dan Snyder, like, you know, really. I, I pray that he's he get on the right path, you know, in following Jesus and, and repenting of his sins of whatever he done. Um. Because obviously, he didn't speak on exactly what he did. He, he, I, well, he, he spoke. He said he snapped on people or, or whatnot. But he didn't speak on, basically, he didn't touch basis on what Lord JJ said about, you know, the child abuse part of, uh, of like, I guess, molested kids or trying to. Um, but anyway, that's very interesting, and I want to know what y'all think, so let me know what y'all think in the comment session. This is, man, all I got to say is a lot of stuff is getting exposed, and it is really showing us that the time is getting closer and closer to the return of Jesus, for sure. It's, it's, it's real, like Y'all, we, we got to get it together. I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff getting exposed and, it, and it's showing how much evil is out there. And some of this evilness that is out there, they just, they're, they're getting to the point where they don't even care. They just do it right in front of our face. But yeah, just let me know what y'all think in the comment section. I really enjoy making content for y'all. Make sure y'all hit that thumbs up and also subscribe, y'all. Thanks. I'm out.